Facebook Live. I do not see anything going on here. I don't know if we are good or not. If somebody's out there, message me because I cannot see anything on the screen. I see that people are on, but I do not see um, any indication that I am on. So if you can see me and hear me, would you type in the message bar that you are seeing or hearing something? <clears throat> Please see or hear. Hello, Sharon, can you see and hear me? Can you see and hear me? If anybody, uh, I'll just send this as your product. If, it, if you can see and hear me, give me lots of thumbs up and likes, um, if, or message in there that you can see and hear me. Can you see and hear me? Because I cannot see or hear me. Highly unusual. <clears throat> Got 28 people on. Is that, did somebody, Confirm, all right, it looks like that's an indication that things are going, but if somebody would type in the message bar that they uh, can see and hear me. Wait, 12 comments, it even says. Where, I'm not even getting the comments. Okay, there, oh, let me. All right, I'm not sure exactly what uh, is going on, but you can see and hear me. All right, so. Hopefully, I don't know. Now, hopefully it is aligned well because I really cannot see or hear myself. But everybody else can, so welcome, welcome. Sorry for this uh, technical difficulty. Welcome, David, Lisa, Joel, uh, Ashley, Thomas, Jason, Mary Beth, Lisa, Tom, Annette. Sharon, Jotiti, Jotito, that's a hard one. And, uh, but it's looking like everybody, I'm coming through. So tell me if I need to uh, adjust the, the position of this a little bit, but uh, because I literally am staring into a black void, uh, this is highly unusual, but for some reason, it's working for you guys. So I'm going to give it one more minute. Got a high number of uh, people on today. That's good. Must be, what is it, November. Uh, I don't know what is it, but for the last few weeks, uh, we've had an increasingly high number of, of viewers, which I love. Yes, we can hear you. You're good. Hi. Ashley Adams, hey there. Back from all your, your adventures in the world, the United States. Um, Mary, hello. Sochi, Sochi, okay. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> and welcome. And everybody says I'm good. All right, so let's get started here. Welcome, everybody, to Rhythmia Facebook Live, Breathwork Edition, every Friday at 1 p.m. Costa Rican time, whatever time it is in your time zone. I am R. Christian Minson, the director of the Breathwork Program here, Certified Transformational Breath Facilitator, Senior Trainer uh, with the, the Transformational Breath F Foundation for the last 12 years. I was a former monk for 10 years of my life, speaker, author, see the book back here, Align, Expand, and Succeed, exclusively available here at uh, Rhythmia. Get it when you come, Shifting the Paradigm of Entrepreneurial Success, Merging Business and Consciousness. So I was a participating author in this, brought it to number one in the Amazon.com charts. I'm the internet coach and catalyst for your evolution and awakening. So welcome. Today we're talking about the direction, the direction of happiness. And uh, since I do not uh, see myself and it feels so weird, I want a lot of feedback, visual feedback, please. So <clears throat> type things in, give me lots of hearts and loves if, if I'm going in the right direction. I do want to mention that, um, 
you know, it was announced on Wednesday that I will be leaving here uh, in the next two months, the end of end of the year, basically. I had a, a two plus year um, sojourn, and it's been beautiful. It's been wonderful. Rhythmia has taught me so much. Uh, I often joke that the um, the people who need the work the most uh, stay here the longest, and that would be the employees. Most of you only come here for a week and you get what you came for. So I've been here for a <clears throat> hundred plus weeks and still work in the program. So, uh, but it's been great for me. It, uh, I've learned a lot. I feel like I've touched a lot of people's lives. And um, so look for me out in the world with my uh, breathwork, um, breathflow.com and the R. Christian Minson. You can friend me on Facebook. But from here, that's my announcement for the week. Uh, we are getting into uh, the, the topic of the direction of happiness. And what is this? This is, you know, what, what direction to look for happiness in uh, and how to align more with it. That, that's pretty much the, the topic of conversation today. And then if we have a little time, I don't know if you can see the guitar in the corner there. Uh, it's, been, it's been my happiness to be able to play basically got in the habit of playing on the Wednesday night ceremonies, a um, number of guitar and vocal songs, which have really uplifted the, the vibe of that night. Uh, and then on Facebook Lives, if I have time, I'll, I'll do a little song in relation to the topic, usually. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, why is this topic important? Really happiness, right? I mean, what is the goal of life if it's not happiness? My spiritual teacher, Paramahansa Yogananda, pretty much said happiness is the goal of life. We're, we're constantly seeking happiness. The problem is that we're not looking for it necessarily in the right places. We invest in material things or in earthly pursuits. And um, while they can bring a temporary sense of happiness or or joy to our lives, uh, they're often, you know, any happiness they bring is usually followed by some kind of downer. Uh, so where is, where is happiness? What is, uh, what is the direction of happiness? And I'm going to tell you right here and now, the direction of happiness is forward. All right, there you have it. So Lisa, thanks. Uh, for that, my breath, uh, that I definitely changed your life. Thank you. Um, Danny says, I'm going to miss you, Chris. Your breath work was transformational in my life. Looking forward to staying connected. Yes, and everybody keep connected with me if you want. Um, <clears throat> Joel, I hope we come again in September. Good luck in your journey. Thank you for online sessions. Yeah, uh, next September, very unlikely there, Joel. Good thing we got to uh, to meet up at least once, huh? Um, Stephen Barry, hey Joel, how goes it? Oh, so that's Joel's up. Um, all right, so the direction, the direction of happiness is forward. What do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean is that uh, what is really the purpose of life here? And you, if you've been following me on Facebook Live for some time, you know that my my whole perspective is basically shaped by the, the spiritual experiences I've had, especially the 10 years of life in the, the monastic ashram, where we got to live a daily spiritual life and what I call the five habits of highly spiritual people, uh, working those habits day in and day out. So the real, the real premise of, of life, especially from that perspective, is for our own progress, our own evolution, basically, evolution of our consciousness, evolution of the world consciousness, basically our own self-realization, right? So this is, this is what life's about. And um, uh, this is the purpose of life. If we, and the thing is, if we do not align with the purpose of life, if we do not align with this direction of moving forward, of continually working our evolution, working our self-realization, then life, has a way of agitating us. It is inherently built into the system that if we're not moving forward, we start to get agitated. So this is a great, uh, both a great awareness and a great sign. 
if you're feeling agitated, if you're feeling uneasy, if you're feeling uh, anything that's less than happiness, it's generally a, 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 an indication that you're not paying enough attention to the real purpose of life, your own evolution and your own spiritual development. Um, let me take a pause here. Happiness is being accepting of the change in your life. Beautiful. Thank you, Asen. Hey, good to see you on here. Um, Michelle, lovely to see you too. And growth awareness. Is that what you mean by happiness? Happiness is growth awareness. Yes. So, again, we are, we are here to evolve. We're here to move forward. That's why this direction of happiness is forward. You, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. <clears throat> Life does not allow you to stand still. And so if you're moving backwards, uh, it's going to feel uneasy. It's going to hurt. Uh, and that's a great indication. Now, moving forward doesn't necessarily mean that everything is all peaches and cream, roses and tulips and all that, right? Where uh, evolution sometimes is challenging. Um, you know, but our evolution, our evolution is really towards accepting who we truly are. And that is and accepting what life truly is. And to boil that all down, I would say that life is love. And so happiness is really aligning yourself fully with this idea that you are an expression of love, that love is all there is. Um, now, this is where I say our evolution sometimes, love is not necessarily always beauty, right? Love, you've heard of tough love, and sometimes uh, anybody who's been through this program here understands what tough love is, generally speaking, yeah. And um, uh, so what we're really talking about when we're talking about love is, is how to love unconditionally, how to express unconditional love. Because essentially, if love is everything, if we don't love any piece of it, then we're, we're out of alignment with this uh, with this concept of fully embracing who we are and who and what reality is. Uh, the greatest example of this was, I've said this before in another Facebook Live, uh, some, some woman came through here, uh, went through the ceremonies, uh, I think it was on Wednesday night, and at the end when we're all sharing, she basically said, I realize that it's all love, it's all just love. And then she continued to recount how um you know she saw her i think it was her uncle who had, had sexually abused her and she'd been you know physically abused and mentally abused by different people and you know i mean her life if there was anybody who who had a reason to complain or to see it as less than love it was her and yet she really got it that all of these experiences are ultimately just love at its core and and when you look at it, any hard experience anything that you know doesn't seem like love on the surface like abuse uh is is often the lesson of love to to rise above that mindset to rise above the the low vibration that that is and learn to express as spirit does, which is in complete unconditional love. Um, you know, you could say God, the this, this sp universal spirit, loves the sinner as much as he, it, whatever it is, loves the saint, right? That there is no favoritism in creation. We all, 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 all are part of the, the whole, and as uh, each is our part, we are equally endowed with the whole. And so we are equally and fully loved by spirit. So let's see, let's tune in here. Perfect timing for this. It's been a painful journey to find happiness. So hopefully Lisa, there's some insight in here for you. Michelle, I'm gonna miss you. Enjoy your future journey. Thanks. And you know, anybody who's gonna miss me, keep keep in touch with me. I will do plan to do Facebook Lives as well and uh, independently. Uh, so you could still tune in with me. Uh, make sure you tune in with my uh, Inhale Life, Breath Flow, uh, our Christian Minson page. Um, Joel, follow the diet and pre-instructions they send you. All right, he's applying, uh, replying to somebody. 
this is what I felt ceremony night after arrhythmia. I eight ceremonies, eight nights of feeling blissed out full of love. Right on, Stephen. And uh, so uh, unconditional love is really the highest goal. You know, ha our happiness is moving forward. Where are we moving forward to? Towards this goal of really learning to be able to express unconditional love. And they, you know, I always say I'm a little wary whenever I talk about presenting a goal because then a lot of times we look at that goal and we forget about the journey. And really life is the journey, let's say, towards this goal, which is ever expanding, ever, ever coming into more resonance with the ability to express unconditional love. Like in my life, uh, you know, uh, there's been some trying, trying times lately and it's, it's so easy to be able to blame or, or say, this is the cause of my unhappiness or this is, you, you know, this situation shouldn't be this way or it's what's bringing me down. But again, if we reframe it and we're really looking at um, where do I find happiness in this, it's recognizing that every situation brought to you is, uh, is a test, is a, a lesson in helping you to unfold the package of unconditional love, how to, how to unconditionally love in, in that particular situation. And it goes across the board. And like I said, with this, with this woman, if, if she could unconditionally love, if she could accept all of her experiences, heinous as it was, as abusive as it was, as really expression of love, I think anybody could do it. So that means you too. All right. Um, what happiness is not now? Uh, you know, happiness is not material possession. And it's so, um, Rhythmia has helped me in, in this way too. Um, you know, as a monk, let's say, we didn't earn a lot of money. Um, it, in fact, we didn't earn any money. We, we got a $40 allowance each month to buy toothpaste and shampoo and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so that really wasn't um, an issue. We, we lived pretty simply. Uh, since I've been here, I've been able to earn an income. Um, I earned an income before being here, but uh, I was able to, to um, capitalize on certain income uh, possibilities and, you know, could afford to buy different stuff and all that. And it, it, it was so fascinating because I, I already knew this conceptually, but it's funny, as, as you earn more, as you buy more, there's always a temporary sort of glow to something that you get, something new, even something spiritual. I got these nice uh, wall hanging type things that are they're very artistic and well, well built. But, you know, after the initial glow it is over, those things don't inherently bring you happiness, right? They're, they're not like generating a happiness vibe. They are just another object on your wall. And if anything, after a while, they can start to generate unhappiness. Like, I don't like the placement, or I don't like the colors, or um, maybe I should have got the other one, or um, it's collecting dust now. I have to dust all the time. You know, we, we start um, our, our material belongings and possessions can easily start to cultivate that unhappiness. Uh, also, uh, happiness is not a, a greater income and this, uh, at least to a certain point, we um, I've mentioned this in the past too, but there's a study out there that shows does an increase in income increase happiness? And it showed that <clears throat> from, you know, from poverty level income up to, um, which I think is like $20,000 a year, up to, I forget what the number was, but let's just call it around $200,000 or something. That uh, there was, that the increase in income created an increase in happiness. Yeah, and that's because, you know, you, you aren't so bound by, by being thrifty or having to, to make choices, sometimes severe choices, do I eat or go to the doctor, you know? But as you get more income, those things uh, become more accessible. <clears throat> and so there's a certain level of life improvement, happiness that comes with that. But after a certain amount, 
um, which I think was around the 200,000 mark or so, they showed that happiness actually started to decline the more income you had. And why is that? Because at some point, that, that income becomes a burden unto itself. Uh, you have to start caring for it. You have to start uh, um, making sure nobody's stealing it. You know, everybody wants a piece of it. You, um, you, you start getting paranoid about it. Um, have to, you know, you look at your, your investments and all of a sudden they're down a day and, and you get all wacky and crazy. So um, this was a study just showing that uh, up to a point you got some happiness from more income, but afterwards it started to go down. So the happiness is not our income level either. Happiness is not how harmonious our relationships are either. That um, by harmonious, I would say, meaning um, you know, or how smooth our relationships are. Maybe harmony is a good indicator of happiness, but you can have harmony without it being a smooth relationship. And what I mean by smooth is that like there's no upheavals, there's no uh, there's no tensions or or contentions. Um, that the relationship, uh, frankly, ends up being kind of boring. Um, so a smooth un, because why, why is this not bringing happiness? Because once again, a, a stagnant relationship, or one that's not, doesn't have a little friction, often is, is, is stagnant and is not moving in the direction of, of realization and evolution. So um, that isn't happy. Getting your way is is not happiness. Um, it, again, it can seem so at first. You, you want this, you want that. You you get this, you get that. You get this to do to happen your way. But then there's always it, it's always not enough. You got to get something else. So so this not enoughness is a big clue that we're not working in the right direction of happiness. And of course, being right. Being right is not happy. In fact, we, we often say, and I jokingly, in relationships too, you know, if you're, you are <laughs> arguing with your, your girlfriend, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? And uh, usually the, the two are, are uh, mutually exclusive, meaning you could be right, you can like, pound the, the, the argument that yes, you know right and you are, and uh, your girlfriend will make sure that um, you're not happy, um, but you, you know you give up the, this desire, which is usually an ego-fed desire to to be right, to have to know, to be the one, the authority, or whatever, and it gives you a chance to to relax into uh, into the discussion or the argument, and um, you know you can actually be happy. So let's see if uh, um, da, da, da. Jonathan is saying, I have my first ayahuasca ceremony next week in Orlando, Florida. I plan to go with me in May, but I wanted to try it somewhere local first. Pretty nervous to experience past trauma and don't want to go into the ceremony with fear in my heart. Any advice? Um, yeah, don't be too concerned about your fear. Uh, know that the, <clears throat> the more... But the more afraid you are, the more that fear is going to come out in ceremony, which isn't a bad thing, but just know that that's going to happen. I don't know uh, where in Orlando, Florida, and what, um, what kind of support staff they have. So really, I mean, my advice would be to go somewhere where you feel comfortable that there's staff. Here at Ridley, for instance, we have enough staff to that you can freak out. And in fact, there's, you know, there's... There's random people who, who freak out in their process all the time. By freak out, what I mean is that they go through their fears and they go, you know, as we're just talking, into the direction of happiness, which is forward, which is sometimes through dark, uh, dark things that have been blocking them. By moving forward into there and getting into that, sometimes it's not pretty. It's, and and um, uh, you have to express it, and uh, on the medicine, sometimes that's a, that expression can seem a little wild. That's all good and fine. That's part of the process, but it's important to have staff that understands that, first of all, and then enough staff to handle it and, and to, to be able to manage that. 
while also managing the other people around. And that's uh, one of the advantages we have here at Rhythmia. So uh, that, the other advice I'd give is anytime anything difficult is coming up, is breathe. Breathe in a connected circular fashion, meaning inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. It doesn't have to be fast, but it should be connected. You should watch the breath go in, watch the breath go out, and feel what's going on. And just watch and feel, watch and feel until that fear passes, and it always will. Zin Lin, hi, Zin Lin's here, um, and she's on, good. Um, oh my God, I'm gonna learn to when I wanna go, yeah. Um, Christian sending you love and light. Thank you, Karen. And and me too. Um, yeah. um, staff at Rhythmia support all the way. So staff is remarkable. Definitely something I noticed every single day. Thanks, Diana and Karen. And so that's, you know, I mean, that's my best um, thing. I just cannot uh, <clears throat> advocate for any place <clears throat> beyond here. I know this place is uniquely suited. I mean, for, for anybody who wants a ayahuasca experience, but I think um, the vast majority of people have never done it before. And so Rumia is the safest, the, the most comfortable, and the most um, loving place I think you'd be able to do medicine for the first time especially. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. Christian. Tried reserving at Rhythmia, mentioned kidney issues. They told me I wouldn't be allowed to do plant medicine, but I'm totally okay to start with breath work alone. Do you know how I can do this? Yeah, message me, um, <clears throat> message me privately, our Christian Minson on Facebook. Uh, also though, you can come here and do the breath work and not do the plant medicine. So that's that's definitely something you can do. Lisa, it's wonderful. Um, let's see, thank you. Uh, I will be putting breathing techniques into play. Been pretty unhappy lately. Hi, Kevin Peterson. Hi, Lisa. Uh, thank you for your advice. Can't wait to go to Rhythmia in May. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. And um, how can I DM you? Uh, Christian Minson, R. Christian Minson on Facebook. Um, or go to breathflow.com and find my email address there, <clears throat> which is basically christian at breathflow.com. Uh, Diana, and your breath works so amazing for me and continues to be for me. And gratitude, my friend, good. And that's why breath work is inherent, our inherent tool, our God-given tool. It was a tool meant to get us through some of these trying times. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, when we're talking about happiness that moves us into how to align with happiness all right so we've talked about you know, why happiness is important it's essentially the goal of life and uh, but then we need to really distinguish between true happiness what brings true happiness and what brings a false sense of happiness but then usually leads to misery the direction of happiness being forward meaning towards our growth and evolution if we're not moving forward we're moving backwards and that's um and that is accompanied by agitation and unhappiness. So we have to move forward in order to be happy. It's inherently built into the game. Um, that forward movement is towards love and not just expression of love in general, but unconditional love, seeing everything as love, being loving in your expression no matter what comes back at you. Um, what happiness isn't, material possessions, wealth, uh, relational um, plateauing, uh, getting your way, being right. So now, how do we align with happiness? What's um, you know? How can we bring more happiness into our lives? Um, they said I'm not allowed to come if not doing the plant other than breathwork week. Um, Nilo, I, I'm not sure that that's totally true. Um, you should be able to come and not do plant medicine and still participate in the breath work. We wouldn't do special breath work sessions for you during plant ceremonies, but you just have those nights off where you could go do your own, you know, practice breath work in, in the comfort of your own room or something. So I would call back and clarify that. If you want to come to Rhythmia, even though you couldn't do the plant medicine, so aligning with happiness. First, uh, 
live a spiritually progressive life. Uh, and so this, you know, what this means is a life like the ashram where I lived as a monk for 10 years was really, you know, the difference between um, uh, that lifestyle and, and the lifestyle out in the world is that that is a lifestyle dedicated to, to prioritizing the spiritual, spiritual activities in our day. Out here in the world, we tend to prioritize the material uh, activities that we have, um, you know, primarily the ones of work, paying our bills, you know, um, maintaining the family, those kind of things. So we really, uh, to live a spiritually progressive life, we want to incorporate what I call the five habits of highly spiritual people, which again, you can get, uh, there are Facebook Lives, uh, uh, archived in there with that title <clears throat> read that or listen to that for the most um, most information but meditation study introspection physical exercise and service those are the five um, uh, habits five daily habits where we practice these habits on a daily basis and this really constitutes the spiritual lifestyle to do these five basic things day in and day out and that may seem boring on the surface, but that is really where the foundation of happiness is cultivated. You know, if you're building a, a, a structure, building a house, you need a solid foundation. If your foundation is mushy or sandy or whatever, it's not, um, it's not gonna support the building of your happiness and eventually that's gonna collapse. So we build this strong foundation first, and that is these five habits, day in and day out. They start to shift the perspective of your consciousness, and that, that is the foundation, what perspective your consciousness is coming from. Because when you get hit with life, you know, something comes out of the blue and knocks you for a loop. If you don't have that foundation, you know, your happiness is shaking and can, and can fall over. If you have this foundation, it's like you take it, um, have you ever seen a palm tree, you know, take the wind? It's, it's just resilient. It's, it's rooted in its foundation, and then it's got this resilience to be able to, to withstand um, the winds of change and um, the storms of destruction. So <clears throat> those five habits, first of all. Uh, and as I, um, let's see, let me just like that. Um, as far as uh, breath work, breath work is always on the list as far as how to cultivate just about anything good in our lives. So cultivating our ha happiness, breath work, which is you know, my forte, is, is such a powerful tool. One of the ways is it, it, it will help dredge up blockages, which are usually emotional in nature, old, old traumas and experiences, that we can bring up to the surface and finally let go of. So that is, um, you know, one way we, we clear clear the field, clear our, our our energetic space of all the garbage or of all the blocks that allow us to move to happiness. Then uh, breathwork also stimulates your creativity and intuition, so that you start to get in alignment with the creative flow of nature and the universe. And as you start to act on those creative inspirations that is moving in that forward direction, right? That is, um, as we said, the direction of happiness forward towards your own evolution. You get the understanding of the breath work, you get the ability to clear some of the blocks. Now, just your task after that to move forward, to act on those inspirations. The Rhythmia program is also a way to help cultivate happiness. So the, you know, the program, of course, includes breath work, but also includes plant medicine, which is a, you know, powerful perspective shifter. Like I said, this woman who, whose life had been full of abuse was able to shift her perspective to see that, that, that not only she could accept and forgive that abuse, that actually she saw it all as love. And there was nothing but love. And in the end, you can scream victim, you can, um, you can you know, let somebody else be responsible for your happiness, or you can accept that, that all is happening for your highest good and, and evolution and watch how your attitude changes as a result. By the way, I love when you sing Imagine from the Beatles. Thank you, you know. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I did sing that um, 
in Facebook Live a few weeks ago too, if that's what you're talking about. Um, Kathy, see you tomorrow. All right, cool. Um, this week, by the way, uh, whoever was talking about Breathwork Week, uh, uh, that's Nilo too, starts tomorrow. Tomorrow's Breathwork Week, so you can, you can hop on a plane. Um, I think there might be a room left. Uh, <clears throat> you could come and do, do Breathwork. So the Breathwork, the Rhythmia program, and the uh, final thing I'd like to, to say to cultivate happiness is uh, an attitude of gratitude, as they say. Uh, gratitude is a, an interesting thing. Like most, most things out there, most, they, can be, they can be a reflection of what already is in your consciousness, or they can, you can use these tools often to cultivate a certain consciousness. So gratitude is like that. What I mean by that? Uh, in the presence process by Michael Brown, he says that when you're aligned with the presence, which means that you are present to life, you're living in the present, you're not future thinking or, or past thinking. Uh, when you're aligned with the present moment, you're aligned with the presence, the, the vital life energy that, that, uh, that has brought creation into existence. So it is this creative energy that now you are in communion with when you are in that space, in that state, gratitude is a natural uh, upwelling. I mean, so when you're feeling grateful uh, for something, that is an indication that you're in alignment with spirit. You're in alignment with the flow of the universe. You're in alignment with the direction of happiness. Uh, you're on forward evolution towards um, being fully present to, to life and the presence. Uh, well, like I said, if you're not fully there, <clears throat> the practice of gratitude can help move you in that direction. So, you know, many people have espoused waking up in the day, you know, before you start your day, name off five things that you're grateful for. Or before you sleep at night, think about or write about in a journal that would also fulfill one of the five habits of highly spiritual people, the introspection, especially written introspection that you... Uh, what are you grateful for? What have, what in the day? What happened in the day that you can be grateful for? And this can really help you reframe that argument you had with somebody, or that that test you had uh, um, moving through uh, rush hour traffic, or what have you. You know, this this helps you cultivate that gratitude, which then cultivates your position with presence. And that, you know, ultimately leads to your happiness. And the C, Karen saying, breathwork and all of the genuine support from you and the staff has been an absolute life-changing experience for me. My life continues to move forward in the highest, best way. Releasing judgment of self and others allowing continued, allows continued strengthening of my foundation, shining light on the path towards my happiness and continued success. The medicine opened my eyes, all of them. Beautiful. And uh, Ruth is saying, thank you again for your energy and wisdom. Grateful uh, for my present moment. Uh, beautiful. Mike, who joined, hey, Mike, who's here uh, in, the, in the intern capacity and also guest speaker capacity. Um, there we go, speaker, couple weeks ago and now been, been working with um, with Rhythmia for the last for the next six months welcome and so as we get close to the uh, end here I would like to first see it does this resonate with you at all are you are you in alignment with anything I'm saying is anything I'm saying helping you to shift your perspective and get more in alignment with your happiness. Um, you, of course, I see a few hearts coming up. If you want a heart or thumbs up me. But if you have anything to say, if, uh, if there's some question that's still unanswered um, around your happiness uh, or anything going on, let's, uh, let's hear it right now as uh, I move into the last few minutes. While we're doing this, uh, I'll just say, what if, now, what if you, um, chose to move forward in cultivating happiness in your life, which really means that you're choosing to, to stay on the path of progress, to stay on the path of evolution, to stay on the path of your own awareness and self-realization, which means that you, you, know, you 
move into the storm. All right, this is great because it's come up twice this last week. Um, when there is a storm, when there, you know, storms are usually metaphorical for the hard times in our life. When a storm comes at you, what do you do? Um, you know, do you do you run from the storm? <clears throat> do you weather the storm? Or do you move right into the storm? And uh, I really get this distinction of this last one because uh, the buffalo, when a storm comes, the buffalo actually starts moving in the direction of the storm. Now, I've always taught, you know, use your breath. If the storm's, storm of a hard time is coming, use your breath. And it's kind of like weathering the storm, being in the storm and waiting for it to pass. But if you take this concept of the buffalo, the buffalo goes into the storm, goes into the direction that the storm is coming from. And why is that? Because the, the more that you move into the storm, the more the storm, the quicker the storm passes you by and you're on the other end. If you're running away from the storm, you know, you're just running with the storm. If you're weathering the storm, you know, it's gonna take however long it does to go. But you move into the direction of the storm. Again, this is akin to us moving toward forward in life, towards your own progress, your own evolution. The storm is an indication that, that your system is recalibrating, that your system is, is shedding what no longer serves you and making space for what does. So, um, you know, don't fear the storm. And if you really want uh, to be bold, move in the direction of that storm. So what if you were to do that and uh, um, really cultivate that, that sense of happiness? How much, how much more content would you be? How much more happy would your life be? Imagine being able to reframe some of these things. You come home and, boy, my boss was sure mean to me. I don't deserve this all. But if you could reframe it, wow, what a lesson I learned today in how to express unconditional love. Um, how to speak my truth despite the fact that I in, am in contention with somebody. Um, so uh, imagine how much your life could improve uh, if you move in this direction of happiness. So with that, let's see what other things. Nilo, yes, so inspiring as usual. Can you repeat your address to DMU because I was also told that next Breathwork Week would be in March and could come for, yeah. All right, so um, R, the letter R, Christian Minson. R, Christian Minson. Um, you can uh, private message me there and uh, Facebook friend me and send me a message. Message me with any friend request. Otherwise, I don't accept the friend request. It's just too many people uh, request friends and I have no context for, for it. So um, just give me a context. I saw you on Facebook Live. I was back at Rhythmia. If you can remember your Rhythmia group number, let me know that and we'll move forward there. Um, Neely, if, if the huge smile on my face is any indication, then yes, oh, I love that. Thanks. So, so that means that uh, you did get something out of this. And that's another way to uh, and use your mind that I should conclude this, but one of the easiest ways to cultivate happiness, smile. We talk about that here in the program, but think about this. Think about this action. We, we talk about sometimes uh, our physiology is attached to certain states of emotion. So, you know, if you're slumped down like this all the time, you, you tend to, you know, tend to be sad or tend to be less, uh, less uh, vivacious, peppy. Why is that? Because that's, you know, the emotion that usually brings you into that, that uh, posture is those emotions. Think about when you smile. The only time you smile is when you are happy. So we've been reinforcing since, since birth that, you know, this upturning of the, the lips is accompanied by a shift in our brain that, that brings happiness. So by actually practicing that physiology, smiling, and a friend of mine said even, uh, if you don't want to smile or you're trying to trick a, a youngster into smiling, tell them to do this. Put a, Put a pen or pencil in your mouth 
it does the same thing. And then you're not, what's great is you'll see that their attitude begins to improve or your attitude begins to improve. And you don't even, you know, in the case of doing this for another person, they don't even know that what they're doing is smiling. But because the, the association of emotion is so strong with this physiological uh, expression that we can start to cultivate happiness by doing that. Um, such a simple but profound trick. Um, eyes open, it, yes, eyes open is a responsibility to practice these. Rest, no other option. Uh, the rest doesn't work anymore, and there is a period of disillusionment and even learning the hard way before surrendering. And that's so true, and uh, that's where, again, when we start to see everything as love, we see that even disillusionment is love because it basically gives us a perspective on what we thought was going to bring us happiness. Now we're disillusioned, and we can let it go so we can actually seek in the direction of true happiness. Um, why do we need to face hard times? That's why I was just telling you basically what's the whole objective of becoming strong and keeping and experiencing and keeping on experiencing heartbreaks. Um, the, the whole objective is uh, to learn to navigate towards not experiencing those heartbreaks. Uh, you know, every heartbreak should be more information for you as to how to navigate um, uh, more wisely in the future. And if you continue to experience them, it may, see, it may be an indication that you're treading on the same wheel. You're stuck in the same groove. And so that can give you a, a, a information on how to get out. Um, and the old adage, ultimately, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. I'd say once again, uh, heartbreak is just is just showing you where you have the opportunity to cultivate unconditional love, and uh, you you know so easy to love when everybody loves you back, right? You're 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 so easily loving and and wonderful, but how about when somebody's not loving you back? Can you still exhibit that same love? And if you can, then you've truly advanced. Uh, Amy, life is constantly about change. They come and they go, or running, fighting, or hiding maintains the patterns that I created to begin with. So true, Jerry smiles, said the hello, good to see you on. Think about you lately, Amy, hello, Karen, uh, Amy and Karen both getting smiley faces. Darian, smiley, <laughs> smile. Your name right there is, uh, how can you be unhappy with that name? Hopefully, uh, hopefully it helps. All right, so <clears throat> we got a few minutes left. Why don't we try to generate some happiness with the old guitar? Now I can't tell once again if you can if you can see or not. I'll do my best. Um, this is a song. I'm trying to think always a song that. Uh, can, can go along with our theme. And what I think here is uh, that this can go along with our theme of happiness because it really, it's more of a chant than a song. It's kind of in Sanskrit and then in English. I don't know the Sanskrit part, so I'm just gonna sing the English part. Um, the lyrics are really just reaffirming of us getting out of the delusional reality and you know, seeing things from a different perspective which once again is where, where our true happiness lies. So with that, uh, yeah, man, play it, smiling. Thank you so much. All right.
and all we'll, we'll do just fine hopefully uh, you got the essence of that and uh, maybe you even got the lyrics you could sing it to yourself such a such a profoundly uh, affirming chant on getting past all these delusional things out here and uh, really focusing on that space beyond this illusion so, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks. Can I get in touch with you on Facebook Messenger? Yes, that's what I said, R. Christian Minson, R, the letter R, Christian Minson, send me a message. If your friend requests me, definitely send me a message. Jay says, beautiful, thank you. Some claps, Kevin Peterson, I'm going to come back just so I can hear you play during the ceremony. You better come back before uh, December break there. So get on, Meg Pearson, hello, Meg. Chef Meg, um, wonderful to see you. Um, uh, Nilo, yay. Jessica, thank you for sharing your music. I always love to. And Jerry, have a beautiful day, everyone, and happy life is beautiful. All right, with that, thank you so much for joining on, for being so attentive. R. Christian Vincent signing off for this week. See you next week. Namaste.